Hey guys, I thought I'd start this video off with a quick physique update. We're around a month and a half into the cut now and officially 10 pounds down and everything seems to be going pretty well. We're at day 44 now, as you would have seen on the video, and I'd say throughout the first 30 days, I was only really around 80 to 90% consistent. There were a few weekends where I'd maybe gone off track a little. For example, my birthday weekend was in this period, so I enjoyed myself quite a bit over that weekend. But the last 14 days of the 44, I feel like a switch has kind of been flipped. I've been so unbelievably good with my diet, not gone over my calories once. I've been hitting minimum 10,000 steps per day, and training's been the best it's felt for a while. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at so far, and I'm excited to see what I can achieve over the next few weeks. Anyway, on with the video. How's it going guys? I hope you've had an amazing day so far. Today we're going to be running through the complete guide on how you should be training to lose body fat and build muscle. Throughout the video we're going to be running through workout split, cardio, what your training should look like, how often you should be training and a few other things which are going to help you get into the shape of your life for summer. Obviously the purpose of this series is summer shredding but when it comes to being in the absolute best shape of your life, you don't just want to lose that body fat. You also want to maintain or even gain muscle mass throughout this period. So let's get straight into it. First things first, what is the best workout split? Now, if you don't know what a workout split is, it's basically how you organize your training throughout the week. The most popular split is generally a push-pull leg split, but there are other splits such as an upper-lower split, a full body split, or a bro split, which is pretty much where you train single muscle groups on each day. But to be honest, your workout split isn't really going to make a massive difference. As long as you enjoy your split and you're hitting each muscle group at least twice per week, you're going to be in an optimal position to gain muscle mass. Now, obviously, I just touched on hitting each muscle group twice per week, and this is probably something you're going to hear quite a lot about throughout this video. So if you're training three times per week, for example, I I'd recommend doing a full body split. Now, a full body split is obviously where you train every single muscle group, so chest, back, shoulders, arms, and legs, all into one day, and you do this three times per week. If you're training four times per week, I'd probably recommend an upper-lower split, so that is combining chest, back, shoulders, and arms into your upper day, and then obviously hitting legs on its own, and running through that twice per week. And if you're training five times per week, I'd probably recommend a push-pull legs upper-lower split, Push is where you train chest, shoulders, and triceps together, whilst pull is where you train back and biceps together. And if you're an absolute lunatic and you want to train six times per week like me, I'd recommend doing a push-pull leg split and rotating through that twice per week. So what, for example, I've been doing, I've been doing a variation of a push-pull leg split. I've been doing chest and arms, back and shoulders, and then legs. And this is just so I can focus on my weak areas. I've found in my physique, my chest, specifically my upper chest, my lower chest is quite good, but my upper chest and my arms tend to be quite weak areas. Therefore, I've got a singular day where I can really, really focus on improving on these areas. And obviously, I run this chest and arms, back and shoulders, leg split twice throughout the week over a six-day period. But more than anything, as I said, all you need from a workout split is something you enjoy and something that is going to allow you to train each muscle group at least twice per week. You just count how many times I said twice per week in the last sort of minute or so. Next, we'll go through cardio. Now, a lot of people say you have to do cardio as part of your fat loss journey, but I actually don't find this to be the case for some people. I think if your job is quite inactive, like mine, where I'm sort of just sat down doing a desk job for the most part, you should definitely do some form of cardio. But if you live more of an active life, maybe you work at an active job or you're just generally more active on a day-to-day -day basis, you probably don't need to be doing cardio. At the end of the day, to lose body fat, all that matters is that you're in a calorie deficit. Now, if you need to do cardio to get into a big enough calorie deficit, then 100% do it. But if you don't have to and you don't want to, then I wouldn't even bother. But if you're like me and you need to do cardio to burn enough calories, then the one form of cardio I would recommend, or the sort of category of cardio I'd recommend, is LIS cardio. Now, LIS is low intensity steady state cardio. Examples of this are walks on the treadmill or the Stairmaster machine. I tend to just stick to an incline walk on the treadmill and make sure each day I'm hitting over 10,000 steps, and this tends to work for me. But as long as you're finding some way to burn calories, that's all that really matters. One thing I would avoid is sort of high intensity cardio, so maybe high intensity interval training cardio. And the reason behind that is because if your main goal is to maintain or gain muscle mass, you want to preserve as much energy as possible and instead put most of your energy into your training and less into your cardio. I'd recommend just keeping things light and simple. 
Next, we'll look into what your training should look like. Earlier in the video, I touched on training three, four, five, or even six times per week. And more than anything, it's just about finding what works best for you. Now, if possible, I'd probably always recommend to train as much as you possibly can, provided obviously you've got the energy to do so. But if you live a pretty busy life and you don't have time to maybe train four, five, or six times per week, then two or three times a week can still be enough. As long as in those two to three sessions per week, those sessions are high quality, again, this will be more than enough. You should structure your sessions in a way that works for you. Earlier on, I touched on focusing on your weak points. And I think when it comes to training, you should really focus on your weak points first and then maybe your stronger points later on in the session. When it comes to exercise selection, I usually base this on three factors. First of all, you have enjoyment. So if you're not enjoying exercises, it's very unlikely that you're going to put your all into that exercise versus an exercise that you enjoy. You're probably going to go all in on that exercise. Second, think about progression. Ask yourself this question. Are you progressing on this exercise? A big driver of muscle growth is progression. So if you have an exercise that isn't serving you, say you're not progressing on the exercise, it could be a waste of time and you may want to do an alternative exercise. So for example, with me, whenever I would do bench press, I did enjoy this exercise, but I wasn't progressing on it a huge amount. And therefore, maybe if I substituted this out for a different exercise, say for example, a machine press, this would work a little bit better for me. And so it did. I progressed faster and my chest grew off the back of this. Third, do you get a good connection with this movement? Again, I'll, I'll touch on chest. For me, I've always found that machine-based presses or Smith machine-based presses work best for me when it comes to training my chest and dumbbell presses don't work as well. And therefore, I'll go with the machine-based presses instead. Now, finally, I wanted to talk about the absolute main thing you should be focusing on when it comes to your training. And that is one key word. That word is enjoyment. This is a word that I've obviously used a few times throughout this video already. And for me, how much you're enjoying your training is probably the absolute biggest factor on how much you get out of your fat loss journey. And obviously how much muscle mass you're going to gain throughout this journey as well. For example, do you enjoy your workout split? Do you enjoy the training that you're doing? Do you enjoy the cardio that you're doing? These are things that I've pretty much just been over. If you're enjoying your training as a whole, then you're going to get the absolute best out of your training. And you're going to be in the absolute best possible position to progress in the gym and gain muscle mass. Also, enjoyment is going to allow you to stick to things for longer. If you enjoy your exercise, you're going to stay motivated for longer. You're going to stay more disciplined. It's going to be more sustainable for you, which is really, really important in the long run. So, for example, when it comes to cardio, I feel like no one enjoys cardio. I'm one of those people I don't enjoy cardio. So what I'll do to make my cardio more enjoyable is I'll watch a YouTube video or I'll watch a Netflix series, or I'll flick through TikTok. If you were to watch a YouTube series, preferably one of mine, so you get the most knowledge out of that time period, then hopefully you'll just enjoy your cardio and it won't even feel like you're doing it. This has certainly happened for me. And for me, it just makes cardio fly by and it feels like I'm not even doing it. So yeah, guys, obviously the ultimate message, just make sure you're enjoying your training and I guarantee you'll get the absolute most out of it. So yeah, guys, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, thanks again for watching the video. As per usual, make sure to hit subscribe, make sure to hit that like button and make sure to hit the notification bell if you've made it this far. I'm genuinely, genuinely really enjoying this YouTube journey so far. I know I pretty much say it every single time, but I just want to thank you guys once again. You are the absolute reason I get to do this and I appreciate you all so, so much. And hopefully I can continue to make progress, make the most enjoyable videos for you guys and just improve each time. But yeah, guys, as I said, I'm going to wrap things up. Hopefully catch you guys in the next one. Big love. Take.